Alrighty, guys. Welcome, 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 one and all. This is your host, Heidi Jester. We're going to be taking a look today at Civil War Battles by John Tiller Software. So let's actually go to the website so we can take a look at what we're looking at here. So, uh, johntillersoftware.com, if you're not familiar. And, of course, we're talking about Civil War Battles. There are quite a few of the Civil War battles. They have Petersburg, Campaign Overload, Chancellorville, Antietam, Chickamauga, Atlanta, Vickersburg, Shiloh, uh, Peninsula, uh, Gettysburg, Franklin, Ozark, and Corinth are all of the different Civil War battles. Obviously, if you understand and learn and play the system, you have quite a few games that you can purchase and uh, start playing right away if you're familiar with this system. Uh, the important part of this is uh, the Civil War updates. So they have now gone back and they are now updating with brand new engine changes and graphical enhancements and 3D map packages. They've gone back and they started updating them with, um, with the release of Petersburg just a couple months ago. And they've done a few of the other ones. They've done Antietam, which we're going to be looking at today specifically. They've done Chancellorville and they've done Peninsula so far. And of course, with the release of Petersburg, um, you can now, uh, if you own any of these games, you can actually go to the Civil War 3D maps and download them. You can see there Antietam, Chancellorville, and Peninsula. Obviously, the uh, Petersburg automatically comes with the 3D maps, so you don't need to upgrade those. But if you had purchased Antietam previously, or Chancellorville, or Peninsula previously, you can get the 3D maps. You can see they're quite big sizes there. So let's uh, take a look here. So Petersburg was the last release, and that uh, was the update that they are now going back and updating with uh, the new enhanced graphic engine and such. So if we look at uh, that, let's actually go down to the one we're going to be looking at here in the products page. So Antietam here, uh, many battles preceded and followed, but none would be as so costly for both sides as Antietam. No more would, uh, no more would citizen soldiers populate both armies rather they would be now known as professional veterans. For the Confederacy, the brilliant Robert E. Lee would be needed to keep the Southern Army alive. Opposing him, a series of Union generals would be tried. Many would fail in the end. George McClellan would be called upon a second time to save the Union. Will he succeed or will lead Lee lead Southern victories to victory? Uh, so it looks like they've got some of the uh, new updated screenshots, which we're going to be looking at specifically here uh, when we get into the actual game. Uh, there are 199 standalone scenarios and 164 campaign scenarios. That is a lot of scenarios, which is awesome. If you are a Civil War nerd, if you are a Civil War buff, if you enjoy Civil War war games... My friend, you can't go wrong with 199 standalone scenarios or 164 campaign scenarios. There are three different campaigns from a variety of campaign experiences. And each of them also has the weather variant to choose from. Uh, historical scenarios include First Bull Run, Second Bull Run, Antietam, Grovetron, Brower's Farm, uh, Chantry, Cedar Mountain, and Southern Mountain. Dozens of what-if scenarios included uh, with meeting engagements, cavalry fights, and equal force fights. 30 scenarios. I'm sorry, 39. My eyes are getting old. What can I say? 39 scenarios specifically designed for a tough challenge against the AI. Many meeting engagements use the new random hex features and the extreme effect of fog of war will also be fully demonstrated. Large maps shared by the campaign Gettysburg, issue orders of battle with limited possibilities for user-created scenarios. 
turn-based game engine with 20 minutes per turn and 125 yards per hex. Uh, graphics encode both top-down 2D graphics as well as Iker metric 3D graphics. Individual battles as well as campaign game, which allows the player to fight a series of battles while making decisions on the course over the campaign. A scenario editor also allows players to build their own scenarios. And of course, the campaign editor, which allows the player to build their own campaigns. Uh, let's just take a look at a few more of these screenshots. We're going to look more in detail as we get into the actual game here. But um, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Just can't wait to show you guys this game. Look at that. Wow. Ah. All right. So that is the John Tiller software. Um, you can pick that up. The scenario designers is Rich Walker. The battle map is Doug Stricker. And of course, the play testers, blah, blah, blah. You can pick it up at the John Tiller software. Just go to the store, purchase it, get you a copy of it, and you can have lots of fun. If you're interested in Civil War battles, but you're not interested in that one, like I said, there's lots of varieties in them. Now remember, there's only a few that have the updated graphics as they are going back and redoing them. Uh, and I should mention that I believe the group that is doing that is the, um, let's see here, it's under resources. It is the Western Design Studio. So you guys should uh, bookmark this page as well. Stop in, let these guys know that you're interested in all the work that they're doing. War Game Design Studio here. And you can see a list of what they're doing. They're actually working on uh, some stuff here, but they just were the releasers of the Civil War Battles. And that, I believe, I'm not 100%, but it makes sense to me that they are the ones that are updating the graphic engine that John Tiller software has been using for all these years. And uh, they are publishing the maps and the, the new uh, graphics that are updating the graphic engine behind the scenes. They've also released the Panzer Battle games. And there's the fine folks that work for this wonderful organization. It was for them, really, to be honest. Um, you're going to see uh, you're going to see the difference here when we get into it. Uh, so you can see they are uh, working on Panzer Battle Three. Come on, guys, let's get this stuff done. I want to. I, I can't wait for North Africa with the Panzer Battles. Oh my God, it's got to. Come on, guys, that's really got to be done, <laughs> please. They're the ones that are going back and updating all the Panzer campaigns to the Gold Edition, which we've looked at previous in some of our previous episodes uh, they are the ones that are going back and updating all of the Civil War battles with the new graphics and I believe from our announcement yesterday that someone found out that they were also going to be upgrading all of the Napoleonic uh, battles with the gro updated graphic engine as well so Kudos to them, all their hard work and effort. Um, we love you guys, really. You're making these series, these games, 150% better. They're not playable unless you have at least graphics that are, they don't have to be state-of-the-art graphics, they just have to be functional, not distracting, and these as we'll see here in a minute, they are doing a great job of making that happen. So uh, anyways, Western Design Studio, be sure to leave them a thought, a message, a comment, and uh, let them know that you're interested in the projects they're working on and you've seen their updates and appreciate all the efforts they have done so far. Oh my God, come on guys. Panzer Battles in North Africa. <sighs> Come on, I want to get it right now. Well, I don't want to wait. Send me a copy. All right, uh, so that's that. So let's get into it here. Well, you can see here Western Design Studios, John Tour Software Engine, Civil War Battles. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to run through the scenario list again. Over here, I'll show you the turns, the actual title, 
the scenario designer and of course all of the uh, text I'm not going to read through all the text we're just going to look at the different uh, scenario names and the length and then we'll upload some of these and check them out so there's a getting started one which basically is like an introductory uh, scenario very small uh, usually comes with a nice uh, help file that kind of steers you in the right direction to play it now let's see what comes next all right so we got a 21 turn this is blackburn's ford july 18th 1861 um this one is 21 turns this is 20 this is 45 turns so bigger scenario bull run version one two three four five six seven eight matthews hill uh henry hill henry hill version one the second bull run historical second bull run version one version two version three version four five six seven eight grove grove ton historical grove ton version one two three four five six seven uh, antinum historical setup 40 turns antinum version one two three four five six seven eight nine ten burnside bridge 12 turns 17th of september 1862 uh northwards historical northwards cavalry south sharpsburg historical sunken road historical uh hagerstown march hagerstown march version one meeting at the center uh shantity historical shantity version one shantity cavalry and of course you know you have your historical setups and then of course you have version one which is going to be a little bit different this is what if you know so even though it's the same scenario they're gonna you know change it somehow so lee sends longstreet to support jackson's attempt to cut off a large portion of the pope's defeated army of virginia pope's army continued to massive retreat back to washington dc so even though it's the same scenario it's going to be different in that some of the setup or, or units are going to be different so um, even though it looks like oh there's shantity and shantity and shantity they're actually going to be three different scenarios uh cedar mountain historical cedar mountain version one two three four five six hagerstown blind hagerstown version one uh, armies deployed this variation deploys the greater part of both armies on the map both armies are approaching each other with great rapidity uh the town the target is hargerstown right hargerstown version two three south mountain uh historical south mountain version one two three gaps to manasa manassas 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 gaps to manassas maybe uh battle of virginia waterton collision second bull run historical second bull run version one two three four five six seven eight uh weather antietam historical so this is going to add in the historical weather and version one two three four five six seven eight nine ten weather battle for the union version one two uh weather battle for the union version three weather blackford forward uh weather for the bull run historical setup version one two three four five six seven eight uh weather for burnside bridge for cedar mountain historical version one two three four five six weather for shanty historical version one the cavalry the weather gaps to manassas weather grove crown grove tin historical version one two three four five six seven weather for hagerstown weather for hagerstown march weather for hagerstown march version one version one two three and weather for henry's hill version one weather for matthews hill uh weather for meeting at the center 
whether for North Woods Historical and Cavalry, South Mountain Historical with weather, version 1, 2, 3, South Sapsburg, Sharpsburg, sorry, South Sharpsburg Historical Weather, Sunken Road Historical Weather, Challenge Blackburn Ford, Challenge for Bull Run Historical, Bull Run version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So challenges for all of those maps that we just looked at, it looks like. So we're going to scroll through this a little bit faster here. Equal Force Fight, number 1, 2, 3, 4, Battle for the Union. 15 turns. What if Jackson sends Johnson Brigade to secure the crossroads? A small brigade level scenario, version 1, 2. Uh, meeting, blind meeting engagements. This variant is the one day version of this historical scenario. The second bull run will play with no additional units. Cedar Mountain, Grovetown, Hagerstown, Cedar Mountain. Meeting engagements, meeting weather. So a lot of variations of a lot of the same cam, second bull run cam. Let's see what this is. 81 turns. Oh, this is part of the campaign. I got you. Okay, so these are all campaign files. So second bull run, you can see, wow, that's a lot of... So you got uh, the second bull run campaign. Let's scroll down here. We got the Antietam campaign. Right. Wow, lots of them. Wow. Holy cow, nice. Wow. Mm -mm. And then the cam for Cedar Mountain. Cedar Mountain. And then Shanty. The campaign for Shanty. Chantilly. Chantilly. That's it, Chantilly. Uh, same thing, campaign for Groveton, Groveton, and campaign for Hoggerstown, South Mountain campaign, uh, Cedar Mountain historical meeting of the second best bull run, a blind meeting engagement. So these are all meeting engagements. Wow. All right, so uh, that's the list of scenarios, tons and tons and tons and tons, as we saw, lots of um, individual scenarios. So what I want you to focus in on right now is when we actually load up one of these, what will end up happening is it will default to the old graphics. And it might only last a second, or maybe less, depending on how fast it loads the 3D map. But I want us I want you to just just to see the difference between the old and the new. So hopefully uh, we're gonna load up Antietam here. Uh, and we're just gonna leave everything on manual right now so we can look at all the units and stuff. So when I click this, hopefully it'll stay on there for a couple seconds so we can see the old map. There. Oh my gosh, so that is the old map. And there is the new map. So hopefully you got a good glimpse of the way it used to be and what it is now. And that is the most important thing that I can show you with that is, oh my gosh, what a difference this 3D map makes. So we're going to zoom way out as far as we can. So we're going to look at all the different zoom levels here. So here is our view of 3D Extreme Zoom Out. So let's take a look at the wonderful map. Holy cow, it is a monster. Nice, huge map. We're scrolling to the right. Look at that. Wow. And all the way to the north. There's Turner's Gap there. And then all the way back over to the right side. And there's the Potomac River, and then if we can, all the way down that side as well. So you can see just how nice and big these maps are. All right, very nice. This is, of course, Antietam, the uh, 
one of the major scenarios, obviously. And now we're going to go to 2D zoomed out view. So this is the zoomed out view. So we get a, you know, a nice, I would guess, what are we going to call this, like a balloon's eye view? You know, if you were riding in a balloon over the battlefield, maybe. Uh, still enough detail in the counters and the maps. Who, <laughs> I just... Uh, <clears throat> I just can't uh, express the difference between the other map and this map. It is um, I, you know, I can look at this map and I can go, oh yeah, here is you know here's a nice ridge up on the uh, the line. These are nice forest hexes here. Here's a, like a little top of the hill type thing and uh, here's some fields down here here's a little valley that the river alongs alongside it doesn't take me even in this view a long time to actually see and figure out what's going on very functional let's go to the 2d normal view so this is the 2d normal view mm -mm -mm. so there you go that's a look at that um there's the unit cards. Of course, I like to put my unit cards down at the bottom here. Uh, so I like to keep it at the bottom. Freeze up the left and right for me a little bit easier. Unit cards look pretty decent with the actual units. Let's click on a few of these guys. And so we got some obviously leaders here. This is Colonel Thompson Munford of the Robertson Brigade. This is the 2D Virginia Cavalry from the Robinson Brigade. If we right click, obviously we get the little hierarchy of, uh, you know, the unit. It's command D, leadership of C, movement of 12 there for the leader. Shows his uh, facing. This is a 105 men. Strength 100%, quality of C, range of 4, movement of 12, fatigue of 0. It's dismounted. So, uh, as we look through this series, we've done a tutorial video on a lot of um, John Taylor games. And one of the things we talked about was, you know, understanding the core concepts from one game and transferring that knowledge over to all of the different series that John Tiller has. You can see a lot of that information should be familiar with you guys at this point. Quality is morale. Um, the unit strength, the color coding, you can see everything's in white, which means it's at maximum value. Let's see if we can actually click on some way that might be not at maximum value here. No, it looks like everybody's pretty much at maximum value. There is the objective. It's a 100-point objective. All right, so let's go and check out and look at... Oh, my God. I'm excited. I am excited to see it. We're going to look at the 3D zoomed out. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. That's all I have to say. I don't play Panzer Battles or Panzer Campaigns in 3D mode because the 3D mode for those battle games don't look this awesome. I mean, they're functional and they're okay I don't find them very helpful but uh, this is actual uh, 3d hand-painted maps for each of these here's Sharpsburg and this is of course we're not zoomed all the way in yet but I just wanted to kind of show you what this view looks like Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh my goodness here. Here's uh, Keatesville. Of course you can turn the map markers on and off as needed for yourself. If you don't like the map markers, you don't have to have them on. 
I actually like the map marker, so I usually leave them on. Now let's go in. Let's zoom it in, baby. 3D normal view. <gasps> oh my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> to be honest, I haven't seen a John Tiller game look so good as this. To be perfectly honest, I've seen the screenshots that they posted when Petersburg was released a couple months ago, and I was, hmm, that looks pretty good. I might have to pick up one of these Civil War games. But this, you know, the screenshots just don't do this justice. I think this looks absolutely amazing. It looks like 3D artwork out there, and... You know, obviously that's what it's supposed to represent, but holy cow, it looks beautiful. You know, the shadowing, the detail, you know, here's a, like a apple tree or something, a couple apple trees in that little, um, in that hex there. And you can see the little individual apples and everything. Oh my goodness. You got this nice little farmhouse out here in the middle of nowhere. The roads, you know, the roads look, you know, I can tell that this is a dirt road, right? And then you can see, obviously, that this is uh, like a paved road. Quickly, easily, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to leave that up for a minute, and I'm going to show you. I had bought Bloody Bill, great looking and great playing game. The update was needed, yes. I bought some John Taylor games. Uh, you know, I've been buying John Taylor games for a long time. And I had bought Napoleonic 18, 1815. Is that this one? Let's see. Yeah, our uh, Napoleonic campaigns 1814, Gathering of Eagles. And I was like, oh man, this this looks game looks awesome. And and it comes with all these scenarios, and I'm just going to play it and everything. And then I loaded it up, and I was like, uh, okay, I can't barely see anything, so i got to zoom in. And then I was like, uh, what the hell is this? I, I, can't even, I can't even tell what this unit is. It looks like, uh, I, don't, I can't even describe what it looks like on my screen. And you guys are watching this through uh, YouTube, but my gosh. I mean, they have to actually click on it and go, oh, this is, what is this, an infantry unit? Oh, okay. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Is this grass? What is, what the hell is this? Uh, and then, of course, you know, you can zoom out and play it in 2D mode, but you're like, uh, is this a road? Is this a... Uh, I and I was like, okay, I'm done. You know, I literally couldn't even play it. So I bought that game and I was like, wow, that was a big waste of my money because I, I can't, it takes too long to try and figure out what the, you know, what things are on the map, what the units are or anything. If any computer game out there needed a graphic engine update, it was John Taylor Software. I hate to say that, but it's true. Uh, Buddy Bill's got to go for a bit. Love the videos. Keep it up. Thanks, Buddy Bill. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. Come on back anytime, my friend. Come on back. If any uh, war game uh, system out there needed a graphic update, it was John Taylor Software. I've been saying it for years and years and years. And when they started releasing the Panzer Battles, I'm like, oh. Wow, this is so much better. And of course, you know, more of my forte because I'm more of a squad platoon kind of guy than I am a, um, you know, like a campaign or uh, operational level type guy. So that was right up my alley anyways. But now that they've updated the Panzer campaigns, they're starting to update all the Civil War games. Oh my God. Now I can actually get back in and enjoy some of these other series. This 3D map. 
I'm sorry. I just I'm gloating because it looks so good. Now let's. Um, there are other options we haven't even looked at. So one thing is. Uh, we can have either hex shading or hex outline. Let's look at the difference. What actually? Hex outline, hex shading. I haven't. Oh, maybe that's for. Maybe that's for 2D mode. Let's see. Hmm, not sure. Maybe that only worked in the old maps. That's a possibility as well. Map contours. Oh, they have, uh, this is interesting. Map contours, if you've been watching my videos, I've liked the map contours, but if I can actually change the color to light. Oh no, that changes the text. Let's see. Color. If we go color light, yeah, I'm not seeing anything change. But maybe. Hmm. All right, let's take the unit bases off, which is an interesting option as well. So the unit bases um, kind of gives you at a short glance. You know, obviously this is the uh, Union because they're blue, right? So, and if we look at the Confederates, they are the gray, of course. But if you want to have your units, uh, we can take the object bases off. You can actually see the unit a little bit better, but obviously you're going to have to know where your units are and where the, en where the enemy units are, obviously. Oh my gosh, that is just <laughs> beautiful. I mean, I could actually play this game. I mean, seriously, I could actually play this game now. Uh, I'm not a big... S oh my gosh, look at the Potomac River looks beautiful too. Zoom in on that. Oops. Let's go back to that. Where was that? There it is. Looks good there. Looks good there. It's even got the nice little water ripple -y looking effect there. And then when you zoom in nice and tight. Oh my gosh. You got the individual buildings. There's Herb. There's Smith. <laughs> There's the Antinum Ironworks. I know probably less about the Civil War than most people. <laughs> I'm not, I'm a World War II guy, but um, so I, I, I know the major battles. I know, you know, who won and I know the basics. But if you're like, oh, well, at the Battle of Antinum, it was all about who crossed the Potomac River first. I have no idea. Or who who controls Sarpsburg won the battle. So I am not even, like I said, interest. I, it's not that I'm not interested in Civil War. It's just I've never really delved into it. But you know what? With this... I could spend some time and I would actually learn a lot of stuff. Look at those units. Oh my goodness. You can tell which way they're facing easily. Mm -mm. And of course the 2D mode, and even if you didn't like the 3D, if you didn't like the 3D, the 2D mode is top notch as well. I, I just, I know, I sound like a broken record, but it looks so good. Let's load another map up, shall we? Uh, yeah, I was almost forgot. So again, once we load it up, hopefully it'll show you the old graphics for a, a second or two before the new map loads. So just see the difference. 
and it'll start now. All right, here's the bull run map. And again, I, how historically accurate this is, I have no idea, but I'm sure some of you gentlemen out there are gonna be like, oh yeah, this looks exactly like it's supposed to look. Um, for me, it looks absolutely amazing. I have, I can't literally not wait to read through the manual and play a scenario for you guys. I've kind of, uh, when I bought this, I, I thought, eh, it's going to kind of be a waste because I'm probably not going to play it very much. But as good as it looks, I might be playing this all the freaking time. This is amazing. So this is, uh, this is Bull Run. Of course, we'll zoom way out so you guys can get a, a gist of, oh my gosh, look how big this map is too. And here's uh, Centerville here. Let's zoom in on Centerville. Nice, beautiful. Oh, nice little bridge there across the river. All right, let's um, let's see. Um, to be honest, it seems like once it loads a map in, it doesn't have problems loading other maps in. So what I'm going to actually do is exit out of the game, and then restart it up because then it's got to reload the maps from scratch. So let's let's show you the. Let's see if we can pop in the difference between Bull Run version. The old version and the new version. There, oh yeah, see that one only lasts in like a second. It depends on how big the map is. Obviously, Antietam is a huge map, so it takes a little while to actually load in. So that gives us a really good example of the old graphics versus the new graphics. Uh, let's check out Cedar Mountain, my friends. Let's see. Yeah, see that one only takes like a split second, but oh my gosh. Look at the different terrain. It looks like a more of a what I would think like a, a like a falls type scenario with the ground, and the the trees are different. Oh my gosh, that's incredibly good. This must be a different part of the country. I don't I'm not sure or Cedar Mountain, but huh. All right, let's uh, see if we can. Load in another couple here. Bull Run. Let's try Grove Groveton. 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 All right. Hopefully it'll give us a second. Come on, give us a second. Nope. It like auto load in. So let's exit out and load it up again. And I'm sorry because I have such a fast computer. It's uh, it's. It's going to load it as fast as it can, but um, what were we doing? Grove 10, Grove 10. Let's see. Here's a Grove 10. Let's try that one. All right, here we go. Come on. Ah, yeah, it only literally takes like a second. Like I said, um, th the bigger scenario takes a few seconds. So let's see if we can try and load in, teed them in again. Maybe it'll give us an, a couple seconds. Well, yeah, it must be cached in my computer now. That's too bad. That's too bad. But, oh my gosh, yeah. All right, uh, let's try and load up a couple other scenarios here. Um, do we, yeah, we tried Groveton. Let's try Hagerstown. Uh, sure, that sounds like a good one. That one took a second. Um, that might have been a good one. March to Hagerstown Blind. Let's try that one and see if we can get that one loaded up. Might take a second or two for that one to come in. Uh, I think it was this one right there. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. What a difference, huh? That one only lasted again a second or two, but gives you a... I mean, look at the difference between this map and the last one we just played, or looked at. 
it looks completely uh, different. I, I don't know. Um, it's cloudy and there's light smoke. I don't know if because maybe it was rainy. It, you know, it kind of looks to me like it's a rainy gray day. Right? That's what it looks like to me anyways. Like a gray, rainy, you know, fall day or something. Uh, probably not fall because all the trees are green, but... Well, where are the actual units here? Here's Funkstown. Let's take a oh, gotta click on Funkstown. There's Funkstown. Wow. All right, so let's look at, I would like to get more of the contours edges. So let's see if we can map contours. Um, a big fan of that to be honest let's try map elevations nope that's just numbers we don't care about that map coordinates jump dialogue obviously here's our jump dialogue box oh my gosh look how big this map is Uh, looks like part of it's unplayable. Is that, is that, I'm assuming it's what's going on there. It's a huge map though. Holy cow. Huge, huge map. You can tell by the jump dialogue box. We are just in this, this, all of that is just that little part right there. So it's a huge, huge map. Congrats for that. Holy cow. Here's Boonesboro. It's cool is all the towns don't look exactly the same. They're all, you know, slightly different, which is, makes it uh, interesting and good. All right. Um, so before we load up some more map, let's take a look. We got our, of course, our general help file. Oops, let's bring this over here. So this is going to give you all your different, uh, you know, different uh, uh melee bar you know commands up here you know when you go to melee and you want to know what all the different options do that's what your general help file is usually going to tell you if all that information there right uh what else do we have here we have of course the parameter data for each scenario it's going to be listing all the information the important important very important stuff that we need to learn about so dawn five o'clock dusk is at uh what is that uh, seven o'clock at night 20 minutes per turn uh night turns are 60 minutes each one hour of twilight twilight visibility is four hexes maximum stacking in a hex is a thousand men maximum counters is eight uh, strength points of 25 men so all that parameter data stuff that we need to look at of course your campaign notes which I absolutely love because it gives you so much good detailed information um, you know that you can learn before you actually start playing the battles and you can you know, you know kind of learn about the history of it especially for somebody like me who's not a civil war buff i have no world war or um civil war books i own probably 15 world war ii books campaign and Tinum follows my previous title of franklin shoho Atlanta, and chickamauga As such it has been the first project but not my last to explore the eastern theater of operations it's certainly an honor to bring the most sacred battle and news that preceded it to HPS ACW campaign series. Several years ago, I visited these battlefields. I was impressed. I received cannot be put into words. These are indeed fields of honor that certainly deserve our attention. Blah, blah, blah. Go into all, oh, look, we actually have photographs of the different this bridge, we could probably find that bridge in one of our maps, right? 
Uh, here is some... Much has been written about the various battles covered in campaign, campaign Antinum. Here are just a few of the many sources, so all kinds of good detailed information that you can pick up. I forget that we can actually see pictures now. Because <laughs> this is like local stuff. This is not across the pond. This is local stuff. All right. I uh, should have some more information here. Scenario design, artificial intelligence, uh, strategy tips. Campaign Antietam is unique in a number of ways. Uh, this introduces new features that will change the way you have previously played. No longer will you be able to move, fire, melee, then move, fire, and melee again. Now, with the use of the new optional melee resolution rule, you will be held to a more closely held historical method of attack. Move, fire, and melee. That's it. Our former Blitzkrieg tactics will have to wait until 1939. <laughs> ah, it's funny. All right, so obviously good information to read this document. I highly recommend all John Tory games you read the... Um, the notes uh, document because it'll cover a lot of things that maybe might be different than the other games in the series, give you some background information, whatever. So uh, good one there. Nice to see. That's our campaign notes. Now, of course, we have our usual man user manual. If you're familiar with some of the John Taylor games, we've already learned a lot of this stuff, but we just have to uh, figure out what's different between this one and the other ones. Uh, we just picked up the Seven Year War yesterday. I read all that, and we learned about line formations in that one. Line formations we didn't have to worry about in World War II. Column formations, mounted formations, dismounting formations. This is all stuff that aren't isn't covered in Panzer campaigns. So obviously we might want to spend a little bit of time understanding that. Movement, pretty much the same as every other game in the series. Zone of controls, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to definitely go through, check out. We know about disrupted units, what that means know about trenches might obviously some of the might be different than some of the other series we'll have to check but good information there I'll be reading that here shortly getting started here's our introductory scenario and uh, what we should be looking at and step by step what you should do for the first couple turns how to select your units, how to move, right click your units, find out about their, um, you know, their strengths and their qualities and everything. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love it. You know what I want to do? I want to check something. I want to check something right now. Um, while I'm thinking about it. Oh, let's load a smaller map here. Uh, uh, not that one. Oops. All right, let's find some units here. Uh, I'd like a unit or two. Oh my gosh. Give me a scenario that actually has units on it. Uh, <sighs> South Mountain. Let's take a look at South Mountain. All right, here's some units. Thank God. All right, so what I want to be able to see is if I click on a unit. And two of the things I use all the time are 
uh, looks like my toolbar is a little bit different here. What I'm looking for, oh, visible hexes and coming, all right, so visible hexes, interesting. Visible hexes. Interesting, okay. So if I go to highlight, I was looking to see if there was a way to um, see what they can see. Fixed units, spawning unit, low ammo, fixed fought units, moved units, disrupted, attached, high fatigue units, isolated units, non full strength, supply wagons, organization. Okay, so a little bit different. A little bit different than what I'm used to. Okay. Um, not sure where, what is going on there. Let's, um, let's just go to the getting started scenario. There we go. No, okay. Okay, so it's still doing, uh, that's not what I wanted it to do. Thank you. Uh, highlight organization. So, Major J. Longstreet, right wing, he's mounted. Ow. Looks rather good, doesn't it, my friends out there? Okay, so if I have this unit highlighted and I say to it, oh, I say to it, I want all visible hexes. Okay, so view again, map contours. Obviously not, not as good in the 3D maps as it is normally. Let's do 2D map slopes. Let's turn that off. 2D map slopes. I'm not seeing much of a difference there. Now, obviously, I can tell that this one is obviously rate. You know, these hexes are raised up from these hexes. I can see that pretty easily. You run into problems when you start having like trees covering up some of the hexes. Obviously, you can zoom out to see, but if we zoom out to see and we do map contours, yeah, that I'm not a big fan of the map contours in this series. I am a big fan of the map. I'm a big fan of the units. I'm a big fan of almost everything else. So 
They are in line formation. These guys are in line formation. Right. I was just trying to see what other map options we had for adjusting brigade colors. Oh, hello. Hello, brigade colors. These guys are all together because they're all pink. Uh, so that the brigade colors removes the um, the base to the units, or maybe it just changes the color. Of the no, it doesn't change the color of the base. It actually removes them. Not sure I like that either. Um, I do like the base. Shoot, shoot. Oh, we got a man. We got a man. Well, I also have two guns in there as well. Um, so. Let's shoot our guns. Two men. Excellent. What are you guys? Ah, opportunity fire. Oh no. <gasps> 17 men. Oh, what's the range on this bad boy? Uh, range of two, right. I'm not really playing, I'm just trying to... There we go. to shoot my cannons again. Ah, all right. Well, there you go. That's a look at Civil War Battles Antietam. Whew. Wonderful, wonderful looking, beautiful 3D graphic engine now. Again, uh, the ones that are going to have that are going to be Antietam, Chancellorville, Peninsula, and Petersburg. And of course, they're going back and updating all the other ones. So, you know, within probably a couple more months, they'll have a couple more. So, if you don't find any of those very interested, I would highly, highly, I don't know if I said this or not, but I would highly recommend you pick up a Civil War game if you are interested in Civil War at all. This is this is a lot better than I'd even expected, to be honest. I, the screenshots on their website just don't do... I mean, it looks good. Don't get me wrong. It looks good here, but this is a screenshot. And you're looking at it, and you're like, yeah, that's better than it was. It's like 100 times better than it was. But to be honest, it doesn't really give you the full appreciation for how good it looks this looks 300 times better than it used to be and I would say three times better than the screenshots so so I don't I think um, yeah it's really good 
I'm all in favor of this. So appreciate all the effort and work going into this, the Panzer campaigns, and uh, supposedly they're going to be doing the Napoleonic and updating those as well. Oh my gosh. And that's going to be a lot of games, a lot of games that I can actually play now, because just not playing with the game that I bought so many years ago, it's like, wow, you know, this is, if they're going to update this with the new graphic engine, oh my god. I can actually play this game then and actually be able to do something with it and I look forward to that so guys I just wanted to give you a nice update here for our Civil War battles Antietam map I mean I the only thing you know that kind of is downside as I mentioned you can obviously see because of the colored variations that this is a higher than these hexes, right? Problem is going to run into when you run into like force and stuff. So they're outlining that they actually use uh, for the map contours. I, I, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that at all. And I think it's because it's, it's using the old map contours. Um, so I'm, I would not use that. So if there was, you know, this, this here looks like it's the same height as this, but it's actually two different heights. So if they would have color coded different heights a little bit better, like this is like, you know, brown, right? And this is like green. So this should be like light, lighter green than this color because it's higher or something to kind of separate it a little easier. I can see these two because of different colors, but I can't see like these two are different heights as these two are different heights as well. But you can't actually see that in the this mode and the way they do the highlighting. So besides that, uh, I mean, that's kind of a minor nitpick, but it's, you know, kind of important when you're dealing with height differential because you get a bonus from shooting downhill or charging downhill or whatever, depending on the game system, it can be important. Uh, but besides that, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I love it. I just can't say enough good things about it. And hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully you guys agree with that. Um, let me know in the thought, your thoughts in the comments section below, if you're watching this on YouTube later. And we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time. I look forward to uh, bringing you guys some Antietam action and maybe have to pick up another Civil War game uh, or so once they've been updated as well. Looking forward to that. So have to read through the manual. Um, and then, of course, here's the change file. So this is all the stuff that has been updated or changed. Implemented settings, uh, alternate unit symbols. Standardized weapons and movement values soon to be rolled out across prior and future titles. Auto defensive fire. I mean, all kinds of stuff. You should read through this as well, I guess. <laughs> so much good stuff going on. Just wanted to bring you a little bit and let you know uh, what's going on. Give you a little taste of a little campaign and Antinum. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks so much for stopping out and watching tonight. Buddy Bill, you come back anytime you can. Everyone else has stopped out tonight. Appreciate your uh, viewership. And we'll see you guys very soon. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.